This video is sponsored by Mark 7 Car Wash Equipment, providing clean, dry, shiny cars for over 50 years. Visit mark7.net for more information. Hello and welcome to Unscripted, the video series that connects you with market leaders. Today on our Unscripted video, we welcome Evo DeConcini, owner of Dynamite Car Wash Concepts. Hello, Evo, and thank you for joining us here today. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. So today's topic is on, on common in-bay automatic maintenance and troubleshooting tips. And, uh, and Evo, before we get into the, uh, the intricacies of, of in-bay automatics, why don't we uh, first start off with a little bit about your background and, and the car wash locations that you currently operate? Sure. So we're here in, in Tucson, Arizona, and I'll keep this relatively brief because uh, just uh, the path in car washing and, and the whole topic isn't the most exciting thing, although I do love what I do. But uh, the way I got started is my oldest brother got us involved in the coin operated car wash business uh, way back when before the MBA automatics were really a thing in that environment. And that was in, I guess it would be like the late 80s or so. And uh, after about 10 years, uh, we ended up with three of those. And I spent a couple of years running those. And uh, around the time I exited to go do some other jobs and, and corporate type things, that's when the MBA automatics became kind of a phenomenon in the self-serve environment instead of just gas stations and whatnot. Around 2012, 2011, um, I created my own car wash brand with a self-serve car wash and an MBA automatic combo. Uh, since then I've done uh, in Bay automatic only car washes. So I have one site called Hurricane Car Wash, which is two tandem tunnels that have two, well, one in Bay automatic in each tunnel. It's a small site, but that's all we could put on there. And then I have two uh, exterior express car washes. So just kind of the new trend and just automation and that kind of thing. So I kind of dabbled in, in those environments quite a bit over the past 25 years. All right, sounds good. So as I mentioned, today's topic is on, on in-bay automatic uh, yes. maintenance and troubleshooting tips. So uh, in your experience, uh, Evo, over, over the decades here, what are the most common points of failure or malfunction or loss of performance that you've noticed with, uh, with today's in-bay automatic equipment? Right. This is one thing because uh, part of the the beauty about NBA automatics is that they are in an environment where they can be open all the time. And part of the curse of that is that people go in there at all times of day. And oftentimes I think that they're confused about uh, what type of car wash it is. So one of the pitfalls that I see is just customers really not knowing what kind of car wash it is uh, because it's changed so much over the years. What you know, someone says they're going to go wash their car. Are you going to a full serve car wash? Are you going to go to an exterior express? Are you going to go hit my little hurricane thing with the two MBA automatics that are there all the time? And if you're used to one environment and then you go to something like this, customers, you know, can get confused. They move around, they damage the equipment. So it's, uh, it's, I guess, creating more awareness of what type of car wash it is and how to use them. If I could just wave a magic wand that's that's what i would do um, but you know these machines get damaged because people oftentimes i mean not oftentimes and once they kind of know the car wash they, they seem to get better at it but it it is a thing you know these things uh, get damaged because people don't know what they're doing okay fair point now for uh, for what the operators can actually control uh, maintenance and, and preventative yes. and routine maintenance. So <laughs> can you share some best practices that, that you've implemented over the years for in-bay automatic maintenance and scheduling, such as for routine and preventative? Of course. Yeah. So one of the things that, and, and we're guilty of this too, right? So I'll go and, and look at my sites here and there and I'll wash my car and run through and just look at a couple things and cruise on out if it looks okay. But on a machine like the one that's behind you, um, there's multiple wash packages, right? And you know, I'll just revert back to the Hurricane Car Wash site that I have, because there's two of those uh, in there, but one is further away from the equipment room than the other. So the chemical and the chemistry and the show for each different wash package, sometimes we're just not really carefully looking at those enough. So to answer your question, a more systematic and weekly testing of each wash package and how it looks and what's going on can help uh, prevent uh, issues with uh, you know customers not getting a clean enough car and, and those kind of things so that's one thing um what else 
I think it's really important to keep these things clean. So we partner with uh, this pressure washing company here locally that does a great job and these things just get really trashed really quickly. So if you don't have uh, a good chemical like acid and, and someone really doing that, the front of that beautiful thing behind you there will look like it came out of the bottom of the Titanic uh, after three months of washing a lot of cars. So that's one thing we really try to do is, is have that systematic, you know, front pressure washing and cleanliness. So when someone comes in, you know, they're not greeted by, you know, something just that looks, once again, rusted and beat down. Right, yeah, we are in the uh, the business of clean, so uh, definitely important to uh, to keep up the per perception is reality sometimes, so. Uh, not, not very well done. Yes, you're right. All right. So, uh, so Evo, uh, how do today's Embay automatic equipment offerings differ from uh, from previous equipment? I think a lot of that is sort of geography based, you know, here in Arizona, one thing that I've seen is there was this initial trend for these, these touch free machines. And that also created some confusion around those types of environments, in my opinion. And now around here, it's sort of gravitated back to friction because people would, and then there's these combo machines too, right? So some of them do both, but what would happen is someone would go in and just buy by price and then they end up getting a touch-free wash instead of a friction wash. It doesn't turn out um, as good as uh, as they wanted. But um, besides the gravitation going more back to friction around here, um, some of the things that I've seen that are pretty cool that people are doing now to make the whole environment better is they are adding extra things at the end of their tunnel, like so a rinse arch, arch, a, uh, a specialty wax arch and the dryers off of the machine, therefore potentially creating better throughput and uh, a nicer show. So I've seen that um, and that's kind of different. Um, when people started slamming these things in, you didn't really see that in Inbay Automatics around here, you know, so that's yeah. another thing. All right, that's interesting. So Evo, if I can put you in the, uh, the R&D uh, chair here for a second. Uh, if you can design <clears throat> and manufacture your own Inbay Automatic equipment, what would you include that's maybe not included in today's offerings in, a, in an effort to really minimize uh, downtime while increasing uh, customer experience as well as saving costs here? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think in this type environment, uh, once again, the Inbay automatic, um, just speed, right? So if you could just find a way to combine the passes, uh, the chemistry, and just make the entire wash quicker, everyone would want that because in, even in our little hurricane thing, once again, with the two machines, when we're really busy. I mean, there's two or three people waiting in each bay and what is it, four minutes, you know, a car or so, depending on what they buy, maybe even more just sitting there. So speed would be one thing. Um, minimizing the customer errors once again. So how do you do that? Um, just uh, that awareness and, and understanding signage uh, so that everyone knows exactly what it is and how to use it. Uh, there's a variety of ways to do that, but that'd be one thing I'd zero in on. Uh, creating a more open feel. So, I mean, there has been machines in the past, like I used to own a PDQ tandem, and they were kind of headed that direction and maybe had something going on right. But in the actual tunnel or bay, it was nothing on the ground. So the side brush would simply just go around the car, which is kind of like a little ballet dance, and it wasn't any faster. Uh, but it just kept the tunnel like open and easy to clean. And then the top brush would just be all overhead, like on these tracks above. There was nothing on the ground. And that's, uh, that's what I would do if I was designing it to just keep it, well, everything off the ground. You know, I can't even tell you how many times I've walked in to reset a bay, uh, a little hurricane because some beer can or soda can or whatever is jammed under the proc sensor at the bottom of that thing. And that's what's shutting us down. I'm like, oh, beer can, whatever. It's one. <laughs> Little things, 2021, and this is what stopped me from washing cars today. So uh, nothing on the ground would be the other one. Um, <clears throat> and lastly, just some way to like waterproof them better. I mean, I go and look at the back of our machines and even as clean as we keep them, they just seem to, over a, a pretty short period of time, get so corroded uh, and, and they're operational, but you're just like, whoa, they just get really, beat up looking really fast and, and it always is is interesting to me because they're designed for a wet environment obviously if you're going to wash a bunch of cars it's going to be an all-day thing so I would find a way to 
conceal most of those parts front or back of the machine and make them just look better longer with less you know intense cleaning maintenance type stuff all right sounds good well as we've uh, as we've already mentioned uh, today these this equipment keeps getting better and better so wouldn't be surprised to see some of those issues fixed uh, in future offerings but uh, it's good to yeah. see you evo and uh, and thank you for taking a few minutes here to discuss embay automatics uh, with carwash.com today Absolutely, Richard, and take care.